Emma, you're a community manager and um, you set tasks for our members every day on Pubble, which is our community forum, and you take questions and all manner of things. So does the issue of dialects come up very often in your daily job? It definitely does. Um, as you said, you know, I'm biased towards Munster and that's where my, we call it an expertise, but my my experience lies. But I do, first of all, make an effort to include other dialects when in my daily posts and I kind of search them out as well and maybe not all of the members notice it but there are some differences in the vocabulary which we'll learn later I presume in this stream um, as well as that then you have our members who are learning different dialects in their own in their own terms also um, so be it that they've started in their own time or they have a link with a certain area from Ireland so they've chosen a certain dialect I have many speakers of Ulster Irish there so and I welcome that as well so I often even in this week's challenge I asked someone I asked a question do you have another word for such and such a word and I like to see all of the various varieties for you know fresh and fosta homa all of these different um types for the word also or with that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah and i also then get questions in from members and um i know that you and your uh, bite size bio calls might deal with it a little bit too in the scripts and um i know there's different you're the more the expert now on the scripts then but i think it does come up quite a lot and i like to see members trying to write in a certain dialect as well and you do see that and it's nice because as a as a beginner coming in or someone who's you know just getting into the idea of dialects and um, you can see the other members who might have been there longer or might have a little bit more irish it's good to kind of see the the various possibilities for writing us by the Indeed, and yeah, it is something that comes up on the, the BO sessions that I do, the scripted um, weekly conversation group, um, because although uh, Bite Size don't, doesn't really come at things from an Ulster um, perspective, um, we do have learners who are learning Irish with us who have a particular interest in the Ulster dialect. And so they may start and they may only have a certain amount, but as they maybe come to Ireland and do courses in the Gaelic of Tony Gaul, or as their reading and learning progresses and they get further into that dialect, it reaches a stage where they have a better idea than I do of how a particular verb might be pronounced in Donegal or um, how partic particularly the pronunciation less so than the forms. Um, mm -hmm. But I generally have a good idea of how things would be pronounced in Connacht. But sometimes I'm kind of grab, just kind of uh, not too sure about Ulster, and I may have to go to uh, Tonglen and have a listen um, just to see. But the thing about it is that there's so much um, variation as well um, locally with these things that uh, it is hard to know. It is hard to know coming out from from one place or another. Very good. So. Um, anybody who's watching here on Facebook or YouTube this evening, you're very welcome to put your questions to us in the chat bar there and we'll do our best to help you. And again, if you're looking back at this um, Q&A at some stage in the future, um, you can leave a comment or a question in the, the comments below, comments bar on YouTube or Facebook and we'll get back to you sooner or later with an answer to your query. Um, so we've had a few questions come in in advance, um, which are quite interesting. We'll start with a nice broad one. Um, and this came in from one of our members, Deborah. Um, so Deborah says or asks, in addition to differences in pronunciation of common words, greeting forms, etc., such as your Kadeimar Atan, Kehri Will, and Kunastantu, among dialects, are there any other commonly used words or expressions? that beginners would find useful. And the answer, Deborah, is that there are loads and loads and loads of them. Um, you wouldn't really know uh, where to start. But um, having a look online, I know on Gaelin, and this is an account on Twitter, I suppose X now, about Gaelin Harkarina. Um, that's really interesting and useful. And then if you go to Wikipedia and look up this link here, um, Ulster Dialect Irish, this is quite interesting because it's quite comparative. It gives a lot of 
um, terms and sort of uses that are made of words and verbs in Ulster that are different to the other two dialects, but also it gives you a bit of a reference in terms of what those things would be in the other dialects. So there's a list as long as your arm on there, if you have the interest and the time to spend looking at it, but it's worthwhile because it's not just about uh, Ulster Irish really, it gives you a sort of reference in the others. So I just picked out a few that um, I suppose if they heard these things said in one dialect might throw them off uh, for beginners, even though they might know the word in another dialect and they just wouldn't recognize it as being the, the same word or a word that might be used in a slightly different context. So the link we have in uh, Ulster meaning difficult, whereas we would have Dakar in Munster um, and Connacht. So I think it's Dili, it would be said, Dili. Um, and then in Connacht, people say Tigge, Tigge Eisho and Tigge Eisho, and why this and why that, whereas we would have Connaheil in Munster. And then more universally, and I suppose in Ulster, we would have Cain Fa. So Cod in a Hail in reference to what, I suppose is the way you translate that, but it's said as one word, Kanahev in Munster, whereas we would have Tige in, um, in Connacht. Um, then Aurk is a word that's used a lot in uh, Ulster for look, as in Feich. Now we have a father over the A there in Feich for Munster, that's just a typo. My typing's not the best. And then in Connemara you have Brana, Brana, so it's spelled Brahneg, but Brana is what people would say. So Arc or Sho, Brana or Sho, Fiach or Sho. So all the same meaning, but three very different words there. Um, in Ulster, Rudin Tucht or Rudin Tucht, something. So Rud Egan, something in Munster or Connacht. And then Tiglum, um, I can or can I, depending on whether it's a statement or a question there in Ulster. So Tiglum in Munster is Faderlum. In Connacht, maybe you might still have as Faderlum in Connacht or Tommy Anon, you would have there as well. And then one of my favorites, <laughs> I'm always very keen to point this one out to the world that we say Kenteus Ta Dinna in Munster. Kenteus um, and Ishtu, for instance. And that's not where we're incorrectly sticking a T onto a feminine noun in the knowledge of singular. AS is a separate word um, for age, which is masculine. So this is why it has theus rather than ish. It's a different form of the word. Strangely, ish is feminine and AS is masculine, but it is its own uh, legitimate word and it's used. Certainly in West Kerry, I don't know if you have that, Emma, in there. Uh, part of the country yeah so i think it's important for people to just to understand that because people think that people are saying that in error sometimes so can each two can taste can taste what age is he and then of course this other word as um it's a different word also masculine and um, we're famously we have this sort of elite group of artists in ireland who receive I think tax-free status and maybe a, a nice lump sum from the government. Um, AS Dona. Um, AS Dona means poets. So AS means people or folk. In this case, a particular type of folk poets. AS Kjol. <laughs> Muictions. Or let me see if I can just fix that. Musicians. Okay. So there we go, AS. But yeah, Deborah, if you're interested, um, if you're interested, those two sites are, are good. The Wikipedia entry for Ulster, uh, the Ulster dialect of Irish, and then Gaelan Herculvina is good, and it's a bit of fun too, and you get little bits and pieces up there every so often. So there you go. Um, so Emma, the next question here came in. Um, Leela, and I think you have an answer to this one. Just put it up there. Yeah, Dare do indeed. It says, I have trouble practicing since I'm the only one interested in Irish in my family and friends. What can I do to practice, interact uh, with people in Irish? 
Well, I have a similar pro uh, problem because I live abroad and I might not have many people to practice with in real life, so to say, other than my lovely students that I teach here. But again, I'm teaching them uh, from scratch. I'm not having full-blown conversations with all of them. Um, so online has to be your best friend in one way, depending on where you live. So I don't know where you are, um, Leela, but you would do well by uh, using the internet. And I have to obviously suggest ourselves here at Bite Size, as we do give that opportunity to connect and learn and meet online with others, because you're not the only one in the world that is in this situation. So our Explore and Grow memberships both offer uh, access to our online community forum, Bite Size Hubble. And what you can do there is practice with others, chat with others, chat with me, chat with Ben, depending on um, what you want to do. So if you're just interested in typing and chatting on comments and posts and things like that, you may do so. I'm on there Monday to Friday. Everyone else is on there every day. All the members, uh, various members are on there. And also then as an Explore member, you'd have the opportunity to partake in a scripted call with Ben monthly, as well as grow members, the same idea, but that being weekly, as well as extra calls with myself for reading and, and with other members. Um, so you get a little bit more as a grow member, but Explore will definitely start you off with uh, interacting by leaving comments and messages and also a monthly call. Now, as well as that, um, you depending on where you are in the world, but I actually don't think it matters where you are because it's available to everyone, is looking up events either in your area in person or uh, calls that are online. And the website is peg.ie, so P-E-I-G dot I-E. And on there, you will be able to kind of, um, what's the word, toggle your search or, you know, Put in your specifics if you want it to be online where you want it to be if you're in ireland well you know you can choose county by county but there are also events that take place internationally i know there are many going on in the states there's one in germany in berlin um but if you aren't able to get one get to one in person there's plenty online and i don't think just because it's Berlin, you have to be living in Berlin. I would like I would say to check what suits your time zone and when those calls are taking place. And I know that across the states um there's different calls taking place. So you're bound to find some sort of um call that will suit your your schedule. As well as that, um Facebook groups, same idea. If you're interested in just connecting with people by typing and sharing interests in Irish, sharing comments, sharing stories, whatever. Um, you can find that on Facebook groups as well. Try out, you know, Irish learners or even if you are in an area, try out, you know, Irish learners plus an area or a country or a city and see what crops up. You might be surprised. And what I don't have in there as well is if you are on Twitter or on X, um, that is also a really nice place to interact in Irish. I recently returned to Twitter myself in the last year and I exclusively tweet in Irish and I only follow people who tweet in Irish or about Irish. Um, so you can kind of immerse yourself there and, you know, be part of a community that's online and not always just talking about the language, but just living their life through the language as well and just making comments and you know putting posts up about things in Irish but it's about whatever so um I think depending on where you are online will suit you everywhere and if you are in a place where there might be an Irish community or people that are interested in the language get involved that way and then try and entice your friends and family to join you bit by bit if you can very good. That's interesting, Emma. And I wouldn't go as far as to say that a better class of person speaks Irish rather than any other language. But do you find that you avoid some of the negativity that you might ordinarily encounter on Twitter or X by only interacting? I do. <laughs> I do. Well, you obviously have still people given out as you would on Twitter always, but I don't have... Um... I enjoy reading it a lot more and um, I make a point to read it more. And I think it's also good because I've, I've, you find out a lot more of, about what's going on um, that might not be 
posted anywhere else or you might not be following a certain um, organization that are just so happen to be hosting an online call or an online um, discussion or a conference or such so I, I find it really helpful for me and I it, it definitely keeps me I feel very connected then with the Irish speakers because I do feel a bit left out living in Germany I feel a bit of FOMO you know maybe yourself as well Ben I know you have way to get home but you don't really I don't know and I don't I'm not always listening to the radio or watching RTE uh, or TG Cahar so this is my way to connect with speakers of the language and, you know, see what's going on. Who's who in the in the Irish world? Hello. Good stuff. OK, so I'm going to go for um, another question here. This one is from Steve. And um, it'll be interesting to uh, know whether you have the same perspective on this as I do, um, because what we'll be getting into here is sort of like uh, micro dialects of Munster Irish, I suppose. Um, the question here is, how is the F sound pronounced in the Munster dialect with verbs in the future and conditional tenses? So I can give you my tuppence worth in terms of Gael and Harkurina or West Kerry Irish, certainly, um, Steve. And in that case, the F in verbs in the future and conditional tenses is pronounced as a H. Um, in that dialect, maybe not the Munster dialect entirely, except in three cases um, that I can see. And even in these cases, it can vary. Um, one person might pronounce it as H and another might pronounce it as F. But those three cases are the conditional second person singular and the passive mood in both the conditional and future tenses. So. Uh, second person singular, I can give you an example of that. And as I say, it can vary from person to person. Um, in the second person singular, certainly I would, and a lot of people who I know would, but not everybody would. So, dolfa, I would say dolfa, but some people might say dolha. And there, I don't know what you would say there, Emma. Dolfa, dolha, punt, domach argadagut. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it takes people about 15 seconds to even decide what they'd say themselves. Um, so while you think about it, and the other two are um, the conditional passive mood. So diaswi, um, to eat. So would eat. This is the passive, not saying who would eat. And um, brishfer, this is an example again of the, the future passive. I can't imagine myself really saying that as brisher and um, brish fur. So those three cases, um, but certainly the first of those there, I think varies a lot from person to person, whether they say dolfa or dolha. Um, but all the other ones, dolhin, um, olhig, and all of this, all the other ones are a H there in Munster. So I don't know how you feel about that. No, I agree. I agree. Um, Dol Foshin, Dol Hoshin. No, I don't speak conditionally anymore, so I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they both sound right. Well, to me, I can't speak... Yeah, I'm not going to quote anything on Daisha Irish for this because um, I could be wrong, but I agree with you overall that it's a okay. perfect sound. Togma. Okay, good stuff. So again, folks, um, we welcome your questions in the chat there. Um, and again, if you're watching back in the future, you can put them in there and we'll do our best to get back to you. We have a second interesting question here from Deborah, who's uh, a GROW member of ours. And um, this one, and I first noticed this, I didn't really give it too much consideration. My wife is Scottish and she pointed out to me that um, Irish people put two syllables in the word film in English to see the film um, and so this seems to be something that's migrated from Irish into Hiberno English so Deborah says sometimes I hear a vowel sound in the middle of a word that's not indicated in the spelling of that word is this common among the dialects or generally more common in one than the other so that's an interesting question and um, this sound is called an epenthetic vowel and you hear it in words like Dorcha, for instance, and Farag, and Sherevish, Darfa, 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 Kinta Darfa, let's say. 
the word for couch there, tuluk, and the word for a baby pig, banov. So it's in all of those. Um, the phenomenon is common amongst the dialects, but whether it happens in a given word can vary depending on the dialect. So an example there is Darfa, where in Connemara, you wouldn't have that in Darfa. It's just the two syllables. The kind of Darfa you would have in uh, Ulster and Connacht. So yeah, it's common across all of the dialects, Debbie, but not necessarily in the case of a given word. It might be present in one, but not in others, or in two, but not in one, and all the rest of it. Yeah. But yeah, is there another term that you're aware of for that, a less formal one, maybe? Um, help, people often just say a helper vowel. Um, help to help vowel. you say it, essentially, it just helps you along. Okay. Um, Shervish versus Shervish, it rolls off the tongue, and mm. we're always looking for an easier way to say things. You know, that's how language adapts, isn't it? If it doesn't sound right in your mouth, well, it'll change eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a certain pleasure in saying Darracha as well, rather than Darracha. But um, I don't know if that word would be pronounced with three syllables up in, um, or with that middle epithetic vowel up in Ulster. Um, darcha, darcha, darcha. It's hard to know, really. Um, but you can always have a listen on um, Tanglin as well if you're interested in identifying ones that do or don't there, Debbie. Anava, so um, one more question here that came in in advance that we'll have a look before we go to the questions in the comments bar, and we welcome your questions there, folks. Um, where are we now? Yeah, so this again is from another um, GROW member of ours at Bite Size. And she's asking a general question or what are some good Ulster dialect and specifically Donegal resources? Um, she says she listens to Nuth Vowel, which is a, a very good. Um, learning resource. She listens to the Ulster counties and she'd like more exposure to refine her pronunciation. So just before I look at the answer to that, Nuacht Vowel is a podcast which features pieces of news or kind of topical stuff. Um, and it's read at quite a slow pace and it has an accompanying text and it's recorded and published in a variety of different dialects. And it also features people who are not from one of the, the dialects. You may get somebody um, who is a good Irish speaker from somewhere like Limerick or Tipperary or whatever. So it has a really nice uh, variety in terms of content and it's been going for years. So um, it's a really good resource in terms of listening and reading at the same time, reading yourself, listening and reading again. You get a lot of reinforcement in terms of making connection between how uh, things look on the page and how they ought to sound. Um, so that's a great resource. So in terms of now, bearing in mind that Terra is relatively um, starting off um, at, at the beginner stage of her learning journey, some of these things um, may take um, a little bit of adaptation for um, the purposes of a beginner. But KMRI, to begin with, is um, a site with content to support learners and teachers of Ulster Irish. Now, it is um, aimed at intermediate to higher level learners, um, but it can be very useful, Tara, in terms of looking at pronunciation because they have um, sort of video interviews or people just talking about themselves, and it has an accompanying script. So you can use that to look at what's being said and to determine how it ought to sound. So my advice to you for that would be, um, and this the address here, if you translate the page using Google Translate, then you can negotiate the directions so that you can put on the video and find the script. And then you're away then, you can just listen to it and read the script as you go along. And then you can use the dictionary if you um, need to look up words that you don't understand as well there. Um, more generally, there are resources like Aber.ie, Fumina.ie, and Tanglin. If you want to look up a specific word, or um, in the case of, I think it's Aber, you can look up phonemes, how particular um, pieces of combinations of uh, letter sound and different dialects as well. Then, of course, there's Radio on the Gaeltacht, which sometimes um, learners struggle with. But again, if you want in a passive way to just 
get a feel for the tone and the pronunciation of a dialect. That's not a bad thing to have on. You'll only be picking up some of it, truth be told, um, if you're just beginning. But in the schedule on Radio Nagailtach, the Borsch Gilt is sort of like a morning current affairs program. And that's on uh, at 11 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And then Blyra doesn't seem to be on at the moment, but that's um, a sort of magazine show that's on in the afternoon. And you'll find um, editions of that on the player as well. And then something that I quite enjoy is a series on TG Cahar with Dohi O'Shea from Kerry, where he interviews different groups um, about their lives and about their music. And that's a really nice example of how people from different areas who um, speak and understand Irish to a high degree can get along quite well and um, talking their own dialects um being understood and uh, being able to say things naturally so that's a nice program so i'd recommend um two episodes there one is with alton and the other one is uh clan vic Ruri, um from donegal so they're nice so it also has english subtitles of course so you can turn those on you can identify the words and you can see how they ought to sound and some pretty good music to be heard as well um, so they're nice. And then I was asking Neil because Neil, our content, learning content developer at Bite Size, is from Tirowen. So he speaks Ulster dialect. And these were his recommendations. Um, there's a series called Now You're Talking on YouTube. And that was produced for BBC Ulster um, by Eamon O'Donnell, who has written a series of grammar and Irish books, Gaelica um, Gonstro and Grammar the Gonstro. So he's pretty good at um explaining um grammar concepts and that in a very clear way so there's that series and then there's a series of books um on tang of yo which are kind of they're short but they're a good introduction to um, the unique features of given dialects so i have the one for uh, kirk and um, neil has the one for kui Ulla, and there's a link to um the the place where you find it there at on Shuppel Lauer in, in Dublin by Law Clea. Um, I'd like to get all of them. I just have the Munster one, but they're great books. Um, so you can have a look at that. Again, relatively advanced in the sense that it's written in Irish. So um, it might be difficult enough for you to make sense of it at this stage, but as you progress, um, it's a good book to have. So on Tang of Yo, so the Ulla or the Ulster edition of that. So might just go and have a look at what's in the comments there, Emma. Um, see what we have. Question there um, from Chris O'Leary, Ulster Irish and Scottish Gaelic, are they mutually intelligible? Um, I don't know what your perspective is on this. Well, um, I took I took two semesters of Gaelic um, last year in the uni here. I have a colleague who uh, is a lovely German girl, uh, Lena, who teaches it. And I was expecting that it would be very like Ulster Irish and no other dialect of Irish. But I was pleasantly surprised to see kind of a mix. It, it depends, certain things. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually pin it on any dialect to be the same. Um, you have Chanel, which is um, meal, but you have Khan up in the north in, in Ulster Irish for um, for yeah. dozen or knee for the negative. Mm. Um, but for instance, then we love a Shevu, we love a H, we love a Lenition in Munster Irish. So instead of Hame, we might say Hame. And that's how it's said in Gaelic. It's Hagma. So it's always ha instead of there's no ta. So I wouldn't actually say that it's any it's like any dialect in particular. Maybe there is more to do. Again, I only did two semesters, but I found that there were links with other um, dialects of Irish. Um, but there then there's things that are totally different, like Gurav mm. thank you, is Tapala. And mm -hmm. they have a lovely um, they have a lovely extra breath put in their la um uh what's it called pre what's it called pre i can't think of the name now pre-aspiration sorry so lat instead of lat yeah 
and uh, mm-hmm. I try and practice that a little bit myself but um, my teacher Elena is brilliant at it and she loves it as well so she'll always make the students really try hard at it so mm-hmm. they're mutually intelligible but I think Irish in general is mutually intelligible with Gaelic and it's very enjoyable when you have Gaelga to actually look at Gaelic and it's hard to unlearn the things that you already know from Irish and mm-hmm. I thought I, I went in a bit cocky thinking I'd be I'd be great at it but there's definitely big differences there as well between the two yeah um i was over in sky about 20 years ago and they have i can't remember them but it means big big donkey house anyway is the place where everybody goes to dance and drink over there the kind of irish center score more aussie or something like this or Higmore, i don't know but anyway i was there and there was rather a lot of drink taken but as far as i could see it was about 80 percent um mutually intelligible um, when we were speaking, and even when you talk about that haw there, um, in Munster would say rud a haw, you know, rud a haw. We would have the ah before, but there's still that sound, and it's like it's kind of like dialect. It's just a matter of identifying. Oh yeah, this means this here, yeah, but that's all it is. And once you get familiar with those things, then yeah, they are relatively, relatively um, mutually intelligible. Yeah. Um. I know that um, you know a lot about Duolingo, um, Emma. <laughs> All I know about it is I spent months trying to learn Portuguese only to arrive in Portugal and find out that I've been learning Brazilian Portuguese and that nobody wanted to listen to me. Um, so that was my Duolingo experience. But um, there was a question on Duolingo there. Um, I saw it as well. Is it gone? Yeah. Oh, here. What is the easiest dialect to learn? That one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go for the Duolingo part. Duolingo is good for learning Irish for starting off, I think. And we've heard it from many of our members. I give a, or myself and Neil interview uh, both Explore and Grow members for our series on YouTube. And I ask the question always, well, how did you start with Irish? And for those who didn't start off in school or in their childhood with Irish, Duolingo is often the the gateway, as I say, into really getting into it. So you'll get a little bit of pronunciation, you'll get vocabulary, but what you won't get, and that's where people kind of need to move on from it, and that's where they find Bite Size or any other courses that they're doing, is that they don't get a deep description of the grammar and why something is the way it is. And even um, I talk to people and they say, ah, that's why that is. I've seen that on Duolingo and I never understood why. So it's good to keep you going. Um, it's You're not going to be fluent, but I would never um, say that it's not good whatsoever. It is it is a good place to start. And if you if you like it and dip your toe in and uh, you might then move on from there. And then the other part of Damien's question, what is the easiest dialect to learn? I don't think there is an answer to that. What would you think then? Well, I think obviously the one you're most interested in is the one that's easiest to learn. If there's any reason why um, you might want to learn one over the other, whether it be uh, due to heritage or due to, to having some foundation in one of them from your years at school or wanting to read a particular um, book in one of them or whatever it happens to be. I don't know if there's an easiest one. Um, Sometimes it seems to me that the way that Munster Irish is pronounced is closer to what's on the page when reading Irish. But as with most things um, in Irish, that's not absolute, it's relative. And maybe it just seems like that to me because, um, (laughs) well, I don't know. Um, I don't feel that Ulster is the easiest one um, to learn. Um, perhaps because uh, the Kaidon varies a bit more. Um, so it's a little bit different in terms of the data of case and things like that. And some of those unique words that we spoke about um, that I gave examples of in, um, in answering Deborah's question, maybe they don't pop us up as much generally in Irish where you encounter it in in the media and um, in the world around you. So maybe it's more difficult to um, find um, that in use generally. 
Um, but maybe again, that's my perspective because I have less connection to it, let's say. Um, I don't know what you think about that, Emma. Yeah, I, I, I want to say the same that, um, well, the standard written is, it, it often shies away from Ulster. They say that the, the standard is a mix of Connacht um, and Munster, but also I think that what's available online, there might be less emphasis put on the Ulster dialect. But that being said, um, Idris Gael in Donegal is one of the best schools to travel to as it's so affordable. They have on-site um, accommodation for students. It's jam-packed. And I find that for my students here in Germany, that is the best place for them to travel. So they actually go learn and they start off at Munster Irish with me. And if they take a scholarship to go to the Gaeltacht, they'll head in the opposite direction of my hometown and where my dialect comes from. So um, it's it's relative to how you're learning the language. It's nothing to do, I don't think it's anything to do with, with the dialect itself. It's actually what's available surrounding that dialect. There is no dialect that's that's easier um, rule-wise. I think mm. every every each dialect has its own um, things that are, you know, harder and easier. Um, but it's it's how it's how much access you have to the the material. Yeah, and I suppose the other thing to say about it is that really there isn't that much difference between them as well. So maybe yeah. not so much of a difference that we could say really that one is more difficult um, than the others. And uh, bearing in mind that we're all coming at it from our own kind of bias um, yeah. as Irish speakers. If we were if we didn't speak any Irish, then we might not feel the same way about it. Um, but just Duolingo there, I will concede um, that it is good at keeping people motivated on a daily basis to do a bit. Um, my daughter at the moment, she's 10 years old and she's learning Welsh and Danish on Duolingo. And part of it is the dopamine hit. It's the bit and it's the fair play to you. You did this today and tomorrow and, you know, aren't you great? <laughs> so it's good like that. Um, but I would also like to point out that we... Uh, of bite size have a free download ebook um which is called free sorry it's not called free it's free and it's 10 secrets for uh, practicing irish every day um so if you'd like to have a look at that and just get a flavor um of how we do things ourselves then that's free to download as well um so question here um from neil kelly and Neil says, how do you feel when speaking Osgaelge, but you have Irish people telling you to speak Osbeerle? Because if I'm honest, it's driving me mad and it's very disheartening and I won't shop there again. Um, so I'm sorry to hear that, Neil. I presume that you're talking about a shop. Um, I don't know if it's a shop in the Gaeltacht or um, in the Gaeltacht, um, in Irish speaking area or not. Um, but um, sorry to hear that. Personally, um, I suppose for me, it's a matter of managing expectations. Um, I spent years shopping um, in Ennis and County Clare, for instance, um, with my son with me and only speaking Irish to him because um, that's what we spoke. Um, but I never expected anybody else to participate let's say i didn't expect um the shopkeeper or the person behind the counter to say oh that's i wouldn't expect that they would necessarily have irish or that they would care i suppose um so aside from the odd puzzled look and um, nobody ever objected or told us that we should speak um, english or anything like that um but i suppose it's it's a question of context i suppose um and uh i suppose if you know somebody who runs a shop and you feel like you can shop there and speak irish then that's fantastic but um not everybody can and not everybody wants to i suppose um i don't know what you think about that emma yeah i feel maybe if it is a shop um that you're in neil people get offended uh because 
it, it comes from a place of embarrassment often that people can't speak Irish and there's a little bit of panic that comes from it as well. Um, I've just, I, just from what I've seen um, online and from what I've seen myself at home even when I do travel home. That being said, I, I even get it from people that I know from acquaintances when I travel home in my bi-yearly um, tour of, of my hometown and I meet all of the, the faces that I've known for years. I'm now living abroad five years and all my all of my jobs that I do are in Irish and I speak Irish in those jobs and I use Irish uh, but I still get the lads in the pub on a Saturday night when I'm at home saying, what are you doing with the Irish? There's no point in that. And I'm looking at them knowing that that's, you know, not not true because my entire career is currently Irish. So you kind of just, everyone faces it, whether you're a beginner or you're a fluent speaker. It depends where you are and who you're surrounding, who you're surrounded by or who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, but if it's the likes of, someone in a shop or a cafe and that yeah it's the expectations and often I I feel that sometimes it's from a place of embarrassment that they can't speak Irish themselves depending on the person or you know speak or speak bare like because I can understand you simple as maybe they didn't mean it maliciously I don't know the tone I don't know the context surrounding it so um yeah don't don't let it dishearten you would be my final word on that don't let it uh because if i listen to everyone then sure i wouldn't i wouldn't have uh i wouldn't be doing anything with irish if i'd listened to everyone over the years Togma. um i have a question here from hyperdog um so this is about ipa is the ipa good for learning irish I have a decent pronunciation without sounding, I want to have decent pronunciation without sounding too American or British. So I know that you live your life um, in the, the arms of academia there, Emma, so you'd know more about this, the application of IPA um, in Irish. Well, I I should have learned the IPA long ago, and I definitely had some modules in, in college where I was supposed to learn it, but I didn't. I have a bit of an idea. Um, but now more and more every year when I start from scratch with my students here in Germany, I do get requests for, um, especially the, the ones really starting out, they want the IPA written beside it. So I kind of have to go on a little journey to sort that out. But as um, Ben had mentioned and linked before, your best bet for that is uh, formina.ie, which we had somewhere here. Um, for the middle one there, formina.ie will offer you the IPA for all three dialects, which is great. And you can look up the phonemes and that. And it is good. It is it is good. Um, but if you're if you're someone who likes to learn languages with the IPA, then I would say go for it. If you're someone that isn't really aware or familiar with using the IPA, I wouldn't go out of my way to learn it in order to learn Irish. Would that be fair to say? I don't know. I, I personally have, I, I teach without it and by, you know, a couple of a month, a couple of months in, my students can pronounce, and they didn't. They didn't need the IPA. So, but I know that there is linguistic students who really value the IPA and find it useful and make it, and that's how they learn. Fine. So I, I I don't think it's a bad thing. But if you want to learn Irish, don't think that you need to learn the IPA. But I think that goes for every language. If you are someone who uses the IPA religiously for all of your language learning, do keep going, but don't don't go out of your way. Very good. Yeah, I mean, um, sometimes when I, if it comes up with um, my students and talk about, well, you know, would you like IPA? And they kind of go, oh, no, it's like learning another language. I'm already just trying to learn Irish. I don't need to be learning that as well, you know. But certainly, perhaps in, in Germany where you are, people learn to use IPA for other purposes quite early on in their education. I don't know. And so if you have that, in your toolkit then i suppose it's uh it's great to be able to use it um yeah 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 very good um so again you're welcome to send in your questions there folks um and while we just we'll be finishing up um in about 10 or 15 minutes and while we wait 
I'll see if you have any other questions. But well, just have a look at, we publish free cheat sheets, Bite Size Irish, that are put together by Neil, who's our learning content developer. So generally when he does a new course or a new reference pack on a given subject, he'll do uh, a cheat sheet on that subject, which is available for free, totally free of copyright to download and to share. So tonight we're looking at dialects and he did do a cheat sheet on just some basic major features um, of the uh, three different main dialects of Irish. So what I might do, Emma, is share this on the screen and maybe you could walk us through it um, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, um, let me see you now. There we go now, okay. Okay, lovely. So, as you can see, we have three pages. The final page of that is just our little call to action. But this has been put together by Neil, as I said before, because we do have a module on dialects in on our Aster platform, which is available to Explore and Grow members. So, um, some of the common features and differences in pronunciation. So we talk first about word stress, and this is a nice one. So generally speaking, the word stress is on the first syllable, and in Munster, although um, it's on the syllable with the sheen of father or the accent. So uh, Neil, for example, from um, Ulster might say Kali. But Ben, would you then do the honours for the Munster version? I would say Colleen. Colleen. So the I father there, Colleen, um, is how it would be pronounced in Munster for the both two of us. Same again for um, the left hand, Kitog, Kitog. And in Munster, it'd be Kitog, Kitog. So there's an accent of father there on the, on the O, so Kitog. And then we move on to the broad BH and MH. So a broad consonant um, are those surrounded by broad vowels, that being A, O, or U. So MH and BH are generally pronounced as W when broad and V when slender. But in Munster, they're usually always V um, bar. There's always a couple of exceptions. So don't quote me fully on that. Um, there will be exceptions there, like owing. A river, for example, but uh, ca will to, but myself and Ben might say ca will to, and the same with iwalak versus iwalak, so v versus w there. Yeah, when we have words like ho as well as ho, where it's simply uh, silent, c o m c h o m h. So yeah, there are exceptions, of course. As always, always. So then we have N after C, G, or M. So in Ulster and Connacht, the consonants N sound uh, like R after C, M, or G. So uh, you see C, N, O, C, and this would actually be a nice example of that helper vowel or that empathetic vowel. Uh, you don't say knuck, so to say, well, I, I would say knuck, knuck, um, knuck. There isn't a, a little uh in there, but mm -hmm. uh, in Ulster and Connacht, it'll be crook, crook, so an R sound there. Same with mna, mna, again, one of those helper vowels, rather than mna, it's just easier to say as mna. And then you have mra, mra, so that's an R sound in there. Then you have the Ulster a uh, father, so that accent on top is called a father, a sheen of father. And the vowel uh, aw sounds different in Ulster. Now, I, <laughs> um, Neil will kill me, but ni he lawn a boshti, lawn a boshti. That's how I would say it. But boshti, la na boshti, la boshti, na boshti. Yeah. So law versus le, and that a ah, father is is something that comes up even with corja or ord. We say even without the father in Munster Irish. I've written corja with with a father for years until I realised yeah. that 
it's actually mm -hmm. not written with a fada. And the mm -hmm. same with Ord, Ord Skull, like a high school. Um, You're not the only one. Actually, yeah, mm -hmm. there was a father on the on the on the uh, father on on my school's name for Ord Skull, but again, you could just say that that's dialectically written then, as as we say it. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily wrong. Yeah. So um, I can we go through the rest of the cheat sheet? I see some other comments coming through. But that being said, I'll just show you there is vocabulary on the second one, which we've discussed already. The main difference um, or the first difference that learners come into contact with is the yeah. how are you? The kunas of thought to versus kei will to versus kajimar thought to. And again, just to get people more. nice and confused at the very beginning of their learning. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. Um, as well as then the name, the word for Irish itself, Gaelga versus Gaelic versus Gaelin, uh, or yeah, Gaelic. And the big one as well, the word for dog, you have Madra, Madha, or Madhu. So quite a difference there, um, even in spelling. And you have for everybody, you have Gachdine in Munster, you've Chulagine in Connacht, and Achendine in Ulster. So nice few uh, differences there. Oh, um, yes. And um, yeah, just a little bit of a difference there in um, initial mutations there, the data case. So Riv and Glihe and Riv and Chlihe in Ulster. So Riv and Glihe in monster and then there again and um, we have Aaron Mord um, in Ulster, in monster then we would have Aaron Vord in uh, in Ulster there and a difference on the end there Ada and Fada as well so yeah so that's um, maybe we'll leave it there with the cheat sheet um, but that and um, a variety of other useful cheat sheets um, that we've published over the last year or so are available on our blog site and they're entirely free to download and to share there isn't any copyright on those um Gurmaga the emma very nice so you were saying there were some more comments in there mm -hmm. um how awkward is it here we go how awkward is it for irish speakers to hear a learner mix dialects I think it's um, perfectly understandable and it would be very surprising if people didn't, um, William, unless they just, you know, go to live in a particular Gaeltacht for the purpose of learning and learn from scratch, then and there's going to be a mix. And there's a, even a mix with, with people who aren't learners as well. You know, people like me who go, say, from Kerry up to Galway and go to university and you encounter and people from different dialects and you pick up little things you know maybe some of your verbs start to change a little bit because you're accommodating for other people so maybe you're not using those synthetic verbs as much or maybe you pick up you like a word like tawa or something that they use in Connemara and you start to use it yourself they're all they're all nice words so um I don't know Emma I don't think that it's it's that awkward it's to be expected. I think it's very I think it's very common uh you have to also think about people who are even going through the school system in Ireland you have Irish teachers that have learned their respective dialects in different areas as well so you might have one teacher who speaks Munster Irish for the first three years and then someone might have Connacht Irish in the next three years and you get a mix and it's it's very very common and again as Ben said not even for learners for people who are fluent in the language they'll have a mix sometimes depending on how they learned their Irish and they might have spent a couple of summers down in Kerry and a couple of other summers up in Donegal. So I wouldn't worry about that at all and you'll always be understood either way. So go for it. Absolutely. Um, a question here about Port Lorge for yourself there, Emma, before we finish up. Um, mm -hmm. Any information on the Port Lorge sub-dialect? I'd like to learn that specifically rather than Munster generally. Well, there is a nice series on YouTube by Kieran E.A. Uh, called What the Fuckle. And um, if you just look up What the Fuckle Daisha dialect, there is a five or six part series there where he, uh, she speaks to a scholar from the area who really gets into the nitty gritty of it. 
if um, anyone is looking to read um, things in the Podlorga dialect, there's a lovely um, there's a lovely magazine or book that comes out yearly called On Lin Vui or On Line Vui, as we'd say, um, which you can buy online. I think it's actually only about 10 or 15 euro. It's very nice. I'll pop in the, the name there, um, On Line Vui. I'll put it up on a banner for us. But um, yeah, I would start off with that. And as I say, try and try and get to the, the Gaeltach itself. They do... Uh, both online courses and courses in person in um, Kalosh Narina is where you'd be heading and uh, that is the name of the um, the magazine and Kalosh Narina if you have a look there you will find something for you um, to do that I, I'm not aware of any books that are specific to it I know you have um, those that series of books that Ben mentioned earlier, but there actually isn't one on uh, the data dialect. So I'd start off with Kieran EA's uh, What the Fuckle, and then have a look at uh, Kalosh Narina to see if you could enroll in a course and start start there. Um, I think that's all I have to say with the time that we have. Okay then, Gurmina Maka to Emma. So yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, I guess Gurmina Maka gave us the questioner. Thank you all very much um, for your questions. Just a reminder um, that um, apart from what we do online here and the the blog and the cheat sheets and that, we are also um, an online learning platform, bite size with a variety of different memberships and supported learning and things like live video calls and opportunity to practice with other learners from around the world and to get advice from people like myself and Emma and and Neil. So that's just the general landing page there for seeing what we have on offer. And then just at the top of the um, comments banner there on um, YouTube, we have just the link there to um, our free ebook just to keep you motivated and just give you some ideas in terms of incorporating a little bit of a bit of Irish every day into your daily routine.